A celebration of the number four. Hi, welcome to Garage Geek. This morning, I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, which is Chris from Record Talk, and he entered a contest for Brett Helms' Life on This Planet blog. Now, I have to write that down because I mess up everything. Brett Helm is having a contest because he wanted to celebrate that he hit 4,000 subs. You know, Brett, I'm really close to that myself. <laughs> So, since I'm a contest whore and I jump on every contest, not because I want to win, but just because I I love sharing my collection in a new and interesting way um, that other people have devised for me. So, I'm again, I'm going to jump on this contest. And, you know, I'm not going to do just vinyl because all these um, contests are mostly from the VC. I just use it as an opportunity to show a whole bunch of stuff. So, I hope you're along for the ride. You're going to get music, movies, books, comic books. I'm forgetting something. So let's go. We have to answer four questions or show off stuff from four questions. Number one, great fourth albums. So I've got this in my lap, so I'm just going to show these first so I can get rid of them. I'm going to show you some four comic books that are number four. And I picked this one. This is Superman Batman number four uh, from the New 52. And the reason I picked this is because I love uh, Jay Lee art. Now, over the years, his heart, his art has really changed and it's become more and more stylized. And I, I just, I really dig it. Here's the fourth comic from the Little Bird series from Image. The art in this was just so quirky it's like that throughout the entire book it's it's very colorful very quirky so here we have the micronauts number four look at that now yes that's a darth vader ripoff who cares this is baron karza coming at you full force looking and blasting people and look at this person in the background getting blasted by what are like stormtroopers this stuff is awesome. They came from inner space. <laughs> Who cares if it's a ripoff? Just enjoy it. It's awesome. Here is... I pulled this one because it's funny. I love Omega the Unknown. This is a comic uh, my brother had and I read it. But look at him. He's being attacked by Alley Cats. <laughs> and the villain is named El Gato. And he says, You have defied El Gato, senor. Now my fanged minions bring you death. I'm like, I wouldn't want to beat up the poor cats either. But, I mean, he's being swamped by all these alley cats. <laughs> Knight of a Thousand Claws. Come on, that is awesome stuff. Here we have a really old comic. This was before I collected. But this is Shanna the She-Devil number four. And she's fighting the Mandrill. And she's got to jump on this rhino and prevent him from reaching the populated area, even if it kills her. <laughs> go, Shanna, go. All right, this is a king size special number four. Look at that gorgeous cover of Thor. Thor versus the living planet. That thing is awesome. Sorry, there's so much glare because of the mylar. I have them in, but wow, the mylar makes them look stunning. Okay, this is Jack Kirby. I couldn't resist when I pulled this out. I've shown it, shown it before. But look at that Jack Kirby goodness with Black Panther. He created the character from Fantastic Four, I believe. He's certainly the first one to draw him, I believe. But anyways, there we go, Black Panther. Oh, look at that glare. I'm getting mad. And that was it. So those are my comics. I'm gonna, and of course, those were all number fours. They were number four uh, issues in in the series. The next thing I'm going to show is great fourth albums. Found them. I just showed this one, but I love the Moody Blues, and this is their fourth album, and I love it. It's great. The whole thing. All the Moody Blues albums from this period are really cool. So this one is on the threshold of a dream, and it's. It is a concept album about dreams. Next, I really, really wanted to show Katie Lang's Ingenue, especially it has a huge hit, Constant Craving, but I don't own it, which is a shame. I want it so bad. 
But this is a cool Katie Lang album. I hope that doesn't get me disqualified. Here is Chris Isaac's fourth album, which is San Francisco Days. So the one right before this, which I have, is also a record store day essential, is the one with a Wicked Game on it, his really big hit. But this album is excellent. And look at him there. Yowza, what a cutie. Come on. You can't deny it. And then... I wanted to show off Sinead O'Connor's fourth album called Universal Mother, which is excellent. It's an excellent album in her catalog. I don't have that one. I don't I don't even know if that's out on vinyl. I definitely have the CD. So I just pulled her greatest hits that I got at a record store day, um, I think a year or two ago. Yeah, I paid $30. And this one is one of those shitty ones. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. This is one of those ones where there's a double album inside one. And, I mean, it is clear vinyl, but it's still, it's kind of a shame when you're, you know, you get a double album and you jam them into one single sleeve. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. But it's Sinead O'Connor, so I had to buy it. So, remember, her fourth album is actually Universal Mother, and it's really good. She she covers Nirvana on that. Um, I, I forget... She covers all apologies. I am not your football. I am not. I think it's called Red Football. So every song on it is killer. It's a really good album. The second item is the fourth song on the record is your favorite. So I pulled three randomly. The first one is The Bu Buggles. And of course, their huge hit was um, Video Killed the Radio Star. But this album is is a really good album, and the fourth song is I Am A Camera. Camera, camera. It's a great song. If you've never heard it, you should listen to it. If you only know Video Killed the Radio Star, this is a really good album, actually. It's got a cool cover. It's reversible, right? So this is reality, and then you break through. Or is this the Matrix reality? Which is real? We don't know. Buggles help us. Next, one of my favorite albums again is Face Value from Phil Collins. And the fourth song, I mean every song on this is great, but the fourth song is The Roof is Leaking and it kind of slows the record down and you you get to hear Phil's voice. I I mean that's probably not true. You get to hear his voice a lot. I mean like you he he's a good singer. And uh, this is a, a plaintive song about uh, a, ver a really, really poor family. And it's sung from like a first person point of view. And it's a very poignant song. So again, the roof is le leaking, if you've never heard that. Now this one's just for fun. Culture Club, Kissing to be Clever, has a lot of really good songs. But the fourth song is... I'll tumble for ya, I'll tumble for ya, I'll tumble for ya, I'll tumble for you. I'll tumble for you. Awesome. Didn't think you'd have to sit through me singing, huh? Well, you did. The next one is four is somewhere in the artist title, the title of the song, the record song. I This was like a cop out for me because it was easy. I went to my classical music and I found two albums by Gustav Mahler with Symphony Number no. 4. Look at that gorgeous cover. And that one too. So Mahler's Symphony Number no. 4. Then an, a really easy one was The Four Seasons. So this one I recently showed as well. This is Bernstein's Vivaldi, The Four Seasons. And look at that, those colors. Just stunning. What a beautiful cover. And then I have uh, Recomposed by Max Richter, Vivaldi's The Four Seasons. And what's cool is that this is die cut. And as you pull this, the colors can move up and down and you can change them because it's uh, it's a double album. And so you can change the sleeves. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, I pulled this one because I love the cover art, right? And so this one is Luigi Boccherini. And as you can see, it's... So as you can see, this is guitar quintet number four and a bunch of others. So you have to decide whether that was a cop-out or not. I just grab symphonies with four. I mean, how easy was that? Now, the last one is Arizona-related items. So, I only have one that is truly Arizona-related. So, this is 
by one of my favorites, Andre Kostelanitz, and it's called The Lure of the Grand Canyon. And da da da, Johnny Cash is on this. So that gives him some cred, right? Him some cred, Andre. Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous album? You know you want that in your collection. And I have two more. Um, one, of course, is Glenn Campbell, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Um, but I don't actually have that album, so I'm just showing a different random Glenn Campbell album. So just pretend it's By the Time I Get to Phoenix. You all know that song. And then, I don't have any Eagles albums. I had some, but I got rid of them. I just, I just didn't like the covers. They're so they're so plain. There's only like one or two that have good covers, and I don't have those. Uh, but they do have a song where they're... Oh, it's Take It Easy, right? Where they say, Standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona. Such a lovely sight to see. Well, when I was traveling across country, I for a long stretch, I was driving along Route 66, and I actually stopped where that song was... Uh, written or where it was about and there's a there's a big tourist spot there so I'm gonna try to include some pictures from that um, while I'm talking well we're not done and if you only came here for the music please don't switch off I got a lot to share with you so I grabbed a couple of movies I mean I didn't go too in depth but one of my favorite directors John uh, John Waters this is his fourth feature film now he had some can I say feature film a lot of his were, I guess, they were budget. What does feature film actually mean? Anyways, this is his fourth film. Now, he did have four or five shorts. I didn't include those. And this is Female Trouble. And I would argue that it's his best. Now, some would probably pick Pink Flamingos or maybe Hairspray. Nope, this is the one. Next, I'm going to talk about Studio Ghibli. Now, My Neighbor Totoro, which I have, and I can't find it. So this is kind of making me worried like, I don't know where that is, but I think it's because I showed it in a video and I put it down like I always do. And I'm so disorganized. So pretend my neighbor Totoro is right here. And this one is the steel. I have both of the steel books. And this is Grave of the Fireflies. Now, for some reason, they seem to that they premiered the same day in Japan, both of them. And what's weird is they have different directors from the same studio. So it's possible that it's hard to determine which is the third and which is the fourth since they premiered the same night. So what I'm going to say is that My Neighbor Totoro is the fan favorite. That movie is stunning and amazingly so. But this is by far the superior movie. This is probably, in my opinion, the greatest animated movie ever made. And if you haven't seen it, you need to because wow. And don't watch this when you are sad. Or if you, and if you do watch it, have a box of tissues nearby. Not in a perverted way. Okay, finally, we're going to talk about a couple books. That's it. I pulled my favorite author, and his name is Kazuo Shiguro. And this is his, by far his most famous book. It's got a little goo here. I meant to take it off before, but I didn't. And that is The Remains of the Day. So that is probably his most famous novel. And it was made into an Academy Award winning movie, right? Anthony Hopkins and... Oops, I'm forgetting her name. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. She's a great actress too. Uh, she was married to Kenneth Branagh, right? Oh my gosh, somebody is going to correct me. She's a great actress though. And she's so good in the movie. So the remains of the day. But this is actually his third book. His fourth book is called The Unconsoled. I've read, I believe I've read all of his books. But I don't think I have them all. Because I, I read them over time and I either got rid of them because I was overseas or I just never bought them because I got them out of the library. This book also won major awards, but The un Unconsoled went into a totally different direction. It introduced elements, I believe, of existentialism and magic realism. And from then on, his career, the, his writing, went in very different directions. And I've always found him very fascinating because even though... His style is very unique, and it's easy to tell that you're reading one of his books. He tries something different stylistically. Now, from The Unconsoled, he went more into magic realism and, and fantasy, and then he went in 
a direction of science fiction, but still keeping his liter like literature, like serious literature is definitely his domain. And he's like stepping his foot into these other genres and conquering them. So if his most recent book is Claire and the Sun, well, that definitely has some, some sci-fi elements to it. But it's basically the same concept. You have a possibly unreliable narrator through naivete, and they're just struggling against the forces of the world under different circumstances. So I absolutely love him, love his writing. This is his third, not his fourth. But the reason I chose to, to, to focus on him is because with his fourth book, he went into a new direction after winning all these awards. So kudos to him for keeping it fresh. And there you have it. If you stuck with me this long, going through movies, books, comics, and even literature, kudos to you. Thank you so much for your support. Please support Brett Helms' Life on This Planet blog, who is honoring uh, his 4,000 uh, subscribers. Like I said, I'm getting so close to you, Brett. I'm so close. I'm probably going to pass the 4,000 mark any hour now. I also, uh, <laughs> I would also like you to, if you haven't already, um, please sub to Chris from Wreck-It Talk. And I want to thank you for your support.